We are the guinea pig collective. All will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome back to the channel with the most hated guinea pig on YouTube. I hope that you are all doing well. And I appreciate you taking your time to stop by and check out this video. So what is it we are going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about and showing off War for Cybertron's Kingdom Galvatron figure. What do you say his name was? Galvatron. Now, I think this one is actually a really cool figure, and we are going to get to the unboxing in just a minute. But I wanted to briefly discuss how Galvatron, how he has appeared in media outside of the toy line, differs from all the other Transformers that came before him in the franchise. Coronation Starscream. This is bad comedy. Megatron? Is that you? Here's a hint. <laughs> So one of the things that sets Galvatron apart, as well as quite a few other characters that were involved in the same 1986 Transformers, the animated movie, was unlike all the other Transformer toys that appeared in media, they appeared in comic books and cartoons after the toys were developed. This was a different scenario for many of the characters that you've seen in the 1986 movie, such as Hot Rod and Cup Blur, Cyclonus, Scourge, Unicron, who didn't get a toy until much later on, and of course, Rodimus Prime and Galvatron. And one small little character that a lot of people tend to forget about, Wheelie. These characters were all created specifically for the movie. And then the toys were created afterwards based on the original concept art that the studio had produced. Now, if you noticed, I did not mention Ultra Magnus. Now, even though this was the first time that Ultra Magnus had appeared in the cartoons. I can't deal with that now. Ultra Magnus was actually a holdover figure from the original Diaclone line. However, they had decided not to reuse that mold right away because of the similarities to the cab portion of Ultra Magnus that was very much like the original Optimus Prime or Battle Convoy from the Diaclone line. Now, at some point in the future, I will get a little bit more into the character of Galvatron, but as of right now, we are just going to show off this kingdom figure and what he looks like and how he is comparable to the other figures in the War for Cybertron line. It's a pity you Autobots die so easily, or I might have a sense of satisfaction. So one of the things I'm going to start off with is how does the Galvatron size compare to a lot of the other figures? Well, if you compare him to the Megatron, you can see he is much longer. And of course, one of his little cronies is Scourge. And of course, Cyclonus, he is much larger. And well, this Optimus Prime wouldn't even stand a chance against somebody that much larger. Now he is actually considered a leader class and so is Prime, but he, he is proportionately out of size. I don't understand why they made some of these leader class figures so much smaller than the other ones. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but it kind of is what it is. And let's go ahead and start the unboxing to see what he looks like. So as you can see on the package, he's got all these little ties. You can 
cut these with scissors or a knife or whatever, I tend to like to pay, take a pair of clippers and just get on the back and just snip them right off. Makes it a little bit easier. I mean, there's so many of these ties, If even if I tried to save it, it would be ridiculous. There's way too many, so I'm just gonna cut them off. So after getting out of the box, one thing I did notice right away is he was actually much smaller than the box makes him look. His legs look kinda, actually kinda look a little stumpy. I don't know if that's just me, but as compared to Megatron, he really isn't that much bigger, which is actually kind of surprising. One thing I don't like though, is how incredibly long his cannon is. It, it's way too long for it to be sitting onto his wrist because it's almost dragging on the ground. Whereas Megatron's fusion cannon is much more comparable to his arm size. And one of the accessories that they gave with Galvatron, I thought was a nice little touch, is they gave him a chained matrix to put around his neck. I like that little reference back to the 1986 movie. And as far as posability, he's got decent posability, kicks all the way up. He's got a knee bend, a little bit of a twist there in the thigh. There really isn't much of a rock, except the side rock on the feet. He does have a whisk, a waist swivel, arms go all the way up and around, they come out, there's a turn right there at the bicep, and a double jointed elbow, and the hands even turn a little bit. Now, as far as the head, there's side to side, and a very, very small amount of up and down. Decent posability for a figure like this. that I think about the Galvatron figure. I thought he was pretty cool. The transformation was quite a few steps and I wasn't gonna sit there and show off all those steps, but I mean, he looked pretty good in canon form. Everything snapped together tightly, nothing broke, and he has decent posability. So what do you guys think about this one? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, as always, if you like what you've seen and what you heard, go ahead and destroy that like button for me. And if you are new to the channel, we here at the Guinea Pig Collective would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Will anyone else attempt to fill his shoes? The Transformers, more than meets the eye. Remember, Never let anybody tell you what you can and can't say, what you should or should not watch, because your silence gives consent, and we will catch you all next time. Later, y'all.